What I suspect will happen is the increased use of these kinds of networking, network connection technologies as mechanisms for filtering the world. You know, we do deal with a lot of what people are calling information overload. Uh, we do deal with a lot of distractions, uh, do deal with a, a lot of chaos in our lives. Uh, we're all walking, and it's almost like we're all walking around with post-traumatic stress disorder all the time because of so many changes happening to the world around us, that mechanisms for simplifying, for holding our hands, for making things easier, for, for protecting us, are going to be very attractive to people. And these kinds of network connection systems, whether it's Facebook, whether it's Twitter, whether it's something entirely new, can become both subtle and sophisticated mechanisms for filtering the world. And when you add it to something like a, an augmented reality technology, something that, that literally shows you information over what you see, then those filters can become all the more powerful. You know, so if you have spam filters or something on your augmented reality glasses that that block out advertisements you don't want to see. Well, imagine a, a Facebook tool that helps to block out things that your community, that your friends say, this is disgusting, this is awful, this is this is horrible, you don't want to see that. Or conversely, hey, here's something that's really cool, you want to highlight that in your system. So th the way, the direction that all of these kinds of connectivity, social connectivity tools seem to be going is in this direction of um, social mediation. You know, having a socially mediated experience of the world. And that, I think, will not necessarily change who we are as human, as a human species, but does change how we interact with each other. And it changes how our, our societies connect with each other. Uh, just, again, one example, and I've written about this before, when you have those kinds of filters of your, of your reality with your augmented reality glasses or whatever, it's not just signs. It's not just buildings or billboards that you can block out. You can start to block out people. And if I'm blocking something, if I can block a something on the basis of being identified by the system, it doesn't have to be a static location. If I don't want to see anyone who, you know, contributed to the Sarah Palin 2016 campaign, I can block that out. And only see a you know a blur or some kind of you know clown image or, or something that makes me know I don't want to interact with this person. And the same could be said said if it, somebody who contributed to the Obama campaign or whatever your whatever your particular political or social views. I don't want to see not just I don't want to see that information. I don't want to see that person. I want to have no social connection to that person, even the kind of social connection that is. Um, demanded by physical presence. And that, I think, becomes a really big, scary, difficult to wrestle with issue that is, in many ways, the logical conclusion of these kinds of technologies that we've been talking about.